windy day on tap here. It's November 15th, 2020, and I've got a few things I want to do inside today. Our hold-up mechanism for the table is super, super simple. You just got a bungee here that goes through a hole, sits through there, and then just ties in there. And then when in transit, we'll put a piece of foam or something inside there just to kind of keep that from whacking into the wall. In order to cut that channel in the 2x4, we're going to use this. This was a saw that I picked up used, and then when I was doing some research on it, I found out that it had been recalled because Ryobi had some of these things exploding and messing people up. So you could have sent it back in and gotten a partial refund instead of doing that, and I didn't pay very much for this from a garage sale. So instead of doing that, we modified it, and I've got another video on how I changed this up. So basically we're just going to use this and we're going to slide our 2x4 through. We'll lock this down, run that through, have a nice neat channel for those wires. We've got our 2x4 here, about 34 and a half inches. And the next thing to do is to cut that channel in there. I like super simple jigs and it doesn't get much simpler than this. This only took about five minutes to put together. So we've got our guide piece here. We've got our clamps holding down this to the frame. This will slide through. I've got this locked down here. So we'll turn this on. There's a switch on this side that used to control the circular saw. It's not plugged in yet. And then we'll lead this through, lower it down a little bit, do another pass, slow it down a little bit until we get maybe about a quarter of an inch in. So that's the track we'll use. This took about three runs through and pretty neat, nice and smooth. I tried to go too deep on the first one and what happened was it started to wander a little bit. We can still use this, it's just not as pretty, but you can see some of those waves. So the answer is just to shave off a little bit each time, but I think that'll be fine. Very clean. This is turning out to be a pretty useful little modification for this saw. This is pretty much the first project I've used this for. And I made a deeper channel here. Our wires don't need much space to go through here, and we'll have an opening for the switch on the other side. But the reason we had to do this channel through here was because where the wires go through the aluminum frame in the camper, we had to clear clear that section there. So that should fit around there just fine. We'll have lots of space. We're going to make our opening a little bit bigger. This is the actual hole for the switch size. But we're going to make this bigger because this will cover any overrun. And I don't want this to be too tight here. So we're going to drill two or actually drill four holes. Cut that out with the jigsaw. And then we'll cut this down a little bit, attach this to this, and start running our wires through. And as the clouds thicken and the rain starts moving in and the wind picks up even more, I've put all the tools away that were sitting out here. And we're going to move inside where it's cozy and start working on the wiring for these. So we've got our two pieces cut, and those don't need to be pretty at this point because we're going to have our cover plates on there. So, let's get to wiring. Wiring up these four prong switches. This has an LED bulb in it, and if you want the LED to be lit, you wire it one way, and if you don't care about the LED being lit, then it doesn't really matter, because you're just breaking the flow from the battery. And LEDs do have, a, they pull a little bit, not much, but they do have a little bit of a draw. And if you have a whole lot of them, it can certainly add up. We're going to have a total of about three in here, three or four. So it doesn't matter too much. So I think we're going to go ahead and wire it up with the LED lit. And there were no notes with the package here as far as the schematic or where you put, put the connections. I believe the switch goes on the bottom and the battery goes on the top as far as the connections go. So we'll see if that doesn't work. I'll report back but let's get wiring on these. Quick mount for the switch, looks pretty good. And the back side doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to be functional. 
So we'll start putting those connections on there and wire it up. Got our two posts ready to go. It's been about a week since I've had some time to come over and work on the camper. The last time I was here, my fittings, my connectors were the wrong size. So I had to order some in the meantime in order to get these switches wired up. Right now I've just got those sitting against the wall. They're not attached. So we've got the right terminal kit. And the next step is to start putting this together and get those two by fours mounted to the wall. What we've got here is our two by four with our switch in line there and our channel, our power line, and then our load. What I didn't have last time were these quick connects here. So we've got plenty of those now and we can keep going. Just for neatness, this is the way we're working the wires here. These will go through here. These will go through here. We'll put some duct tape on here just to hold this down tight so it should go neatly against the wall. And I did have to route these out a little bit deeper so we had some extra space to tuck those wires in. That's our first side. There's the second side. Let's drop that table down and see how they look. Since I'm always looking down the line for the next area to work on, I want to have a small shelf up top here for some books. I think a paperback shelf would be really cool. We've got these small bookcase speakers that are just sitting there right now. And I thought what would be really kind of cool, because these have gotten so cheap, this was about 15 bucks, and it runs on 12 volts. So what we can do is we can Bluetooth shoot some music from a phone or another device into some ceiling mounted speakers. I think it'd be kind of cool. With the table down, we've got our light switches all installed. That came together pretty well. Very cool. The next light switch area to focus on is underneath this one. And I want to have a couple switches here. One's going to be for a main shutoff and another one's going to be actually three of them. A main shutoff, I want to have the water pump switch for the sink, and I want to have the switch for this light as well. So we're going to figure out something there. But I think that's pretty cool. Thanks very much for taking a look.